Hey, Warriors fans, this is Sportsman News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a video preview and recap of our game against the Wheeling Nailers. As yesterday, it was exactly what Kirk McDonald said. The team did go up 3-1 to one as Garrett McFadden scored a nice ripper goal to start. Anthony Gagnon scored on the rebound, and Thomas Edmonds scored on a nice centering pass in front. But then the penalties caught up in the end is very rarely... Yes, the PK at times as a whole hasn't been as sharp as you know, like some fans have put on social media, but rarely has it came to the effect of putting them on eight power plays and being undisciplined. The Royals at times in games have had to have a sharper PK where they let the teams have tic-tac-toe to score in the power play, but that's completely different than playing overall undisciplined hockey, which is really what even in the Lions were today, if you watched it on YouTube for uh, the Reading Warriors Lions where they put up with the great interview from Eric with uh, Coach Kirk McDonald, he even talked about how that's just going to add up to you. I mean, if we have a team that's basically playing an entire period, is that 16 minutes, um, an entire period with one extra guy, usually, if unless the other team just is purely not executing at all, which they didn't do in their first uh, handful because they were one for six to start and then scored in the last two, you're going to get burnt if you're putting a team on the power play that much. And that's exactly what happened for the Royals yesterday. Tonight, they have to play a lot more discipline. They honestly would have won that game yesterday um, if there was overall likely more disciplined play. Because if you look at the power play goals, obviously they scored one early, earlier in the game um, from from Sagion, and then our media scored a, a regular goal. But then the goal that tied it up from Watling, which was, that was, of course, on the power play as well as another goal uh, they had on the power play as well, having three power play goals, is Almeida, excuse me, scored his goal prior to his 5-on-5 uh, five five goal on the power play. So, if you let a team score three power play goals against you, typically, that's not going to go too well. But overall, the the um, Royals penalty kill, as Kirk McDonald said, didn't even play too poorly because they put them one for six to start. If you just stopped there and didn't take any more penalties, well, that's actually a really good night of penalty killing. The problem is they added two more. They scored in their final two. And that's really what put the icing on the cake um, in the end, particularly the penalty in overtime, <clears throat> which with four on three ice is even going to give a team more of a chance. And that's exactly what happened is Waltland was able to win it there. But tonight, it's it, it's very simple. I mean, Kirk McDonald said it himself. They, the Royals have been playing solid hockey. They just haven't been getting the bounces going their direction. They've hit a bump in the road, and bumps in the roads happen in a hockey season because that's just the way of the sport. That's why the sport's one of the most interesting ones because, as the adage goes, if you can get it, you don't want to be a team that's saying, oh, if you can get into the postseason, anything can happen. That's not what the Royals are. The Royals are a top contender, but that's just the way it is. So hockey is a sport that is – most unpredictable, you could have the much better roster on paper. It doesn't mean you're going to win that night, where sometimes in, in sports like the NBA, for example, it would mean that. But overall, I think the Royals have played some good hockey in many facets. Like yesterday, they were very solid on 5-on-5, five five, being able to get their goals. They also scored on the power play themselves, going 1-for-2, and were actually not terrible, I don't think. If you look at their penalty kill, they, they kept them 1-for-6 beforehand, so I think we're kind of some fans were kind of jumping the gun there saying the penalty kill was bad. They said it was bad in the end, and that's what cost them in the end. But if you could have stopped at just taking six penalties, then the Royals probably still would have won that game because they would have been up. Um, Still at that point, they would have been up in the game, and, and there would have been no issues. So... I mean, it would have been the, the first penalty score. That would have been three to one if they kept if they stopped taking penalties, stopped giving the momentum because they scored on the power play. Then they tied it up um, on five on five. But the goal before that was on the power play. Um, th that that's really what cost our Reading Royals in this game, allowing them to get too many power plays, and and and, th and that's what it was. If they didn't allow them to have too many power plays, I think we would have said, oh, well, the penalty kill was actually pretty good, one for six. That's great. It just, once you give too many, like Kirk McDonald said, you're going to allow the goals, and that's what they need to not do tonight. They need to play much more disciplined. Wheeling is a team that's going to come at you to try to draw the penalties. They're going to try to draw you into doing stupid things, and that's what the Royals can't fall into. They're a very good team because they play a nice um, um, skilled style, but also a nice aggressive style, similar to the way Royals do with uh, Dechara, with Lowe, and other cats as well when we're really getting under the skin of the other team. But we need to see that more from our Royals tonight rather than from the Wheeling Nailers, which in the end, 
I think, led to the Royals sometimes playing too undisciplined because they're a team that can draw you into penalties. They're, they'll be a team that'll keep a line out sometimes on the ice too long just by cycling. They're a pretty good puck cycling team. And they were able to do that a bit against our Royals yesterday, especially um, late as the game continued to go on, which allowed us to take our seventh and then eight penalty, which really nipped us in the butt. So playing discipline, but also just play on five on five like you did yesterday for the most part, because the only time, to me, they looked great on five on five was after we gave them a power play where they were able to score, which was Almeida's first goal, then his second goal to tie it up was on the 5-on-5. Five five. They didn't really look that good 5-on-5 five five until you gave them the advantage on the power play. Then they got the momentum, and then they were able to tie it up 5-on-5 five five because they had the momentum at that point. I think if the Royals can play as good as they did 5-on-5, five five, if they can go up, like I said, that was important yesterday, but it ended up not prevailing in the end because they ended up putting them on too many power plays. If they can go up again and take a lead, I think they will be in a really good position to win in Wheeling tonight rather than just take one point because all you have to do now in the end if you go up three to one again is not play on discipline hockey if they play like the team normally has this entire season I don't think they would have lost last night it's just that happened to be a game that they played more in discipline and it's exactly the biggest x factor to why that game went the way it did but everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been a recap and a preview to tonight's game against Wheeling, where we hope the Royals can bounce back and instead of just getting one point, can get two and walk out with three out of four points from playing the very good Wheeling Nailers team. So stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the Royals hockey. Go Royals, and please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Juice widget to keep the channel going to 200 or more by the end of February. Peace out, everybody.